Scholars of Swift, it's Prof G, and in our previous lesson, we downloaded Xcode and configured it with a free Apple developer account. In this lesson, we'll create a basic project and use this to take a quick tour of Xcode. I'll point out some of the gotchas that I've seen trip up past students. I'll show you a few shortcuts. I'll show you how you can change the Xcode theme and make sure some of the more useful settings are set. And I'll show you where you can find these keynote slides that provide an Xcode reference and slides where you can test yourself on the names of the various components. So let's dive in. So let's start Xcode. Now I'm using this version. You should make sure that you're using a version that's the same or greater than this version number. Now to build an app, we need to create a project. So let's click create new project. Now we're asked to select a template. App is selected and every app that we build in this playlist will be an app. So keep that selected. Xcode will also allow us to build for many platforms. We're only gonna build apps for iOS. So make sure that's selected, then click next. And on this screen, we're gonna give our app a name and select some preliminary options. Now, why don't we call our first app great since we'll eventually add a button that states how great you are. Now, if you set up your Apple ID in Xcode, like I demonstrated in the last lesson, you should be able to pull this down and select a team, it's probably personal team. Now for the organization identifier, this is used to uniquely identify you as an app publisher. The org identifier is really only important when we publish to the app store. We're not going to do that yet. My organizational identifier is com.mylastname. Apple's documentation now recommends that new programmers use name.yourlastname. Either one should work. You can even use a business name in here if you'd like. Just don't put in any spaces. Now the interface is going to be Swift UI. We won't change that. The language is going to be Swift. We won't change that either. And quick aside, Swift is the programming language. So in the way that Python, Java, and C++ are programming languages, the Swift programming language was developed by Apple. It's now open sourced and Swift is available on all sorts of computing platforms from the small Raspberry Pi to large supercomputers and even Windows. Now Swift UI is Apple's framework for building apps. So we use the Swift programming language, but Swift UI is the extra stuff to handle anything we see in an app. So when we work with images, text, buttons, how we navigate between screens and a lot more, we're going to be working with Swift Swift UI. Now you can use Swift UI to build apps for iOS, iPad OS, Mac OS, Watch OS, TV OS, and Vision Pro. So far, nothing outside of Apple's product families, but Swift UI is pretty powerful. It's Apple's latest technology. It's their tech of the future. This is what we want to learn. Now storage is going to be none. We're not storing any data yet. Don't include tests, that's for a future lesson. And then let's click next. And here we're gonna select where we wanna save the project folder that's gonna contain all of our project files. I'm gonna save mine on the desktop. Now also make sure that we've selected this box which is next to create Git repository on my Mac. We'll cover what this means in a future lesson, but this is something we always want to select. And then when we click create, a folder is created on our desktop with the same name we gave our project. Now I want to quickly take a tour of that folder that was just created. There are a few very important things to be aware of. If you don't know these, you might run into problems where your project stops working. I've seen this happen to a bunch of students in the past. So first, let's click on this great folder that's on our desktop to see what's inside. And we see there's an interior folder that has the same name as our project. That that's great too. So we have a great folder inside of a great folder. And here we also see we have a file named great.xcodeproj. Now the .xcodeproj file is what we can open up if we want to return to a project after we've quit Xcode. Just double click xcode.proj and you'll resume the project where you left off. Now the important warning, never move or change the name of the .xcodeproj file or the interior project folder, or any of the files that are inside the interior project folder. If you move or rename this file, this folder, or anything inside of it, you're gonna get some scary warnings and your project will stop working. Now, why don't we take a look at what's inside this interior project folder. We can open it up and we see we've got a couple of folders, assets, and preview content. We've got a couple of files, contentview.swift and greatapp.swift. When we work with our project, we'll add more files inside of this folder, but Xcode will handle all the file creation, the file naming. We'll never rename or move files directly inside the project folder. So leave the folder alone, xcode.proj alone, and you should be good. Now we do have this outermost folder, and if I click on the desktop, I can now see that outermost great folder, the project name, and you might at some point wanna move this folder, say move it off of the desktop and put it in another folder in your documents folder. But here comes our last big warning. Never move the project folder when Xcode is open. Again, if you try to do that, you'll get some scary warnings and it's possible to mess things up so that your project stops working. So if you wanna move this folder, just be sure you quit Xcode first. 
Now, I don't want you to be terrified to work with this folder. You might, for example, want to make a copy of your work. In fact, that's usually a great idea. If you finish a lesson, you might want to experiment with techniques that you just learned in that lesson, but not make any changes to your original project. Well, it's totally okay to do that. Just make sure that you quit Xcode first. We'll do that now. I'll command tab to return to Xcode, then command Q to quit. Then you can just select the outermost project folder in the finder, and you can either select the file menu and duplicate or press command D. We've just created a copy of our original project folder. And if we go inside the great copy folder and we double click Xcode.proj, we open up this copy of the project. We can make changes to this project and our original will remain unchanged. But I actually really don't want a copy of this project at this point. I've done nothing to the original project. So I'm gonna quit out of Xcode again, and I'm gonna throw the great copy folder in the trash. So to recap, pretty much don't rename or move anything that's inside of your outermost folder. Don't rename xcode.proj, don't rename or move the interior project folder, and don't rename or move any of the files that are inside this interior project folder. Now you can move your project or duplicate your project by working with the exterior project folder. Just make sure you quit Xcode first. So with that very important housekeeping out of the way, let's double click on our Xcode proj file and get back into our empty project. Now we want Xcode to take up the entire screen so that we have the most space to work in. So pro tip, if we double click inside the light gray space in the title bar, this will expand Xcode to full screen. Now the first stop in our tour of Xcode is this pane on the left hand side. It's called the navigator pane. Now we don't always want to see this and we can toggle the navigator pane closed or open by clicking on this icon right here. It's just to the right of the traffic lights. If we hover our cursor over, we'll see a tooltip that says hide or show the navigator. Click that bad boy and we can see it toggles the pane closed or open. Now across the top of the navigator pane, there are a bunch of icons. The one at the far left should be selected initially. It looks like a little folder and this is the project navigator. That's what the tooltip says. This shows all of the files that are associated with our project. Now sometimes these other panes will open up. For example, this icon here that looks like a can of bug spray shows the debug navigator and that opens automatically if our code ever crashes while running. So you might wonder, hey, where did my files go? All you need to do is open the navigator pane, click on the folder icon, and the project navigator shows up and shows your files. Now also note that there are expansion triangles to the left of this first blue icon and the folder icons. Now sometimes these will be toggled closed and it looks like your files are gone, but if you just click the triangle so that it points down, the files will reappear. Now over in the upper right, there's an icon that looks like a flipped version of the icon that toggles the navigator. The tooltip here says this hides or shows the inspectors. Click that to toggle a panel on the right hand side. This is called the inspectors pane. We'll learn about this in a future lesson. Let's close it for now and we'll return to the left hand side in our project navigator. You should currently have the content view selected. If not, make sure that's clicked. The content view is usually the first file that we'll start working in when we create a new project. Xcode has added some code for us already. This is in the code editor to the right of the navigator pane, and to the right of that is a preview area. Now the preview area says that the preview is paused. Let's click this little circle arrow. The swirling progress view starts. It might take a few moments the first time you do this, but hey, look at that! We see an image of an iPhone, and this is showing a live preview of the running code that we have in our editor. Very nice. Now let's do a few more setup things. First, my preview is simulating an iPhone 15 Pro. You can change this by clicking this menu at the bottom of the preview. There are a bunch of different device options in here and a more menu where you can see even more options. Automatic usually shows whatever the current flagship phone is. At the time of this recording, it's iPhone 15 Pro. It's quite possible that you might see different devices in your version of Xcode, but if you wanted to see the simulation in a different device, you could select it here. I'm gonna keep mine as automatic iPhone 15. Pro. Now you can also zoom in or zoom out on the device preview. In the lower right hand corner you see four zoom icons. The first one is zoom out, the next one zooms to 100%, nice for examining interface details. Zoom to fit will fit the device to the preview space, and the last icon is zoom in. And if you have a trackpad you can also pinch in zoom in the space that's just outside of the iPhone image in the preview. I'm going to click on the second to last icon, zoom to fit. Now there's also a lot of extra gray space in my device preview. I don't need a preview that's this wide. 
wide, so to change the preview and move it to the right, I'm going to move my cursor on top of the line that's in between the editor and the preview. The cursor turns into a thick black line with arrows pointing left and right. If I click, hold down the mouse, and drag, I can resize these panes. Right about here is where I'll let go, and that gives me a nice fit for my device, but gives me a lot more space for coding. Now, since we're only going to work with a content view, we can click in the upper left-hand corner to hide the navigator pane, and I'll point out a few more things. You may or may not be showing this thin middle pane that's just to the right of the editor. This is called the minimap. Now, it's not doing much here because our code file isn't very large, but what the minimap does is it shows a reduced view of our entire code file. Now, this could be really nice if we have a very long code file because we can click and drag in the minimap and immediately jump to a particular place in a long file. Now, minimap is good with lots of code, but we're not going to have that much code in our first playlist, so let's hide the minimap to give us more room. We can do that in the upper right-hand corner. There are three icons just below the hide show inspectors icon, and we want the middle icon. It looks sort of like some text lines and some rectangles to the right of it. The tooltip says this is the adjust editor options icon. Click this. In here, you can toggle off the minimap, and the minimap goes away, and we've got more room. Now, there are a few more things that you might want to adjust just in case your Xcode looks different. My code editor to the left has line numbers, and it also has an area called the code folding ribbon, which is super handy. I'll show that in our next lesson, but to make sure that your Xcode also has these options set, you can head up to the Xcode menu, select settings, select the text editing tab, and make sure the options for line numbers and code folding ribbon are both checked. Now, another thing that you might want to do is change the look of Xcode. I know many coders prefer dark mode. Now, I actually have a degenerating vision condition. It's so bad that I can't drive a car, so I see much better with a white background than I do with dark mode. But if you want to change your editing theme, you can just click on the themes icon in the settings toolbar, and to the left-hand side, you see different options, classic dark, default dark. There are different options that you can customize for the various settings. Feel free to explore this on your own if you'd like, but now let's close the settings window and I'll show you one more Xcode tip. Sometimes you might want to increase or decrease your font size. If you click in the editor and type shift, command, and plus sign, each time you press those keys, the font size will increase. Shift, command, minus sign will decrease the font size. And if you'd like a reference sheet with the various parts of Xcode, I've put together a keynote slide with callouts for the names of the most commonly used Xcode components. And I've also got slides in here that have the names removed so you can test yourself. If this looks interesting to you, you can find it in my website, that's Gallagher. Gallagher.com. My last name is spelled differently than most Gallagher's. There's a U in it, but if you can remember Gal, laugh, er as one word, you've got it. Now under this section called Learn to Program Using Swift, you can find the course Open Google Drive. Depending on where I am in a semester, you might see more or fewer files in here, but there should always be a file in here named Xcode Reference Key. And if you right click on that and select Download, you should be able to download that keynote file to your computer. So now that we've got some of the basics in Xcode, in our next lesson, we'll actually start to work with our code, learning how we can make some changes to some of the elements in our interface. Feel free to follow along on social media. Tell others. Now on to the next lesson where we can keep hacking.